Hello. Back again talking about the lies that we've uh, brought into that has to do with God doesn't love me. Uh, Nancy does a great job on this. I love this one too. You can tell I really love this book. Today she says this lie often is related to the previous one. Again, few of us would actually admit to believing this because in our minds we know we, we're not supposed to believe that God doesn't love us. But for many women, there is a disconnection between what they know intellectually and what they feel to be true. Ooh, that's true. And therein lies one of our problems. We trust what we feel to be true rather than what we know to be true. Mm, that, is so, that is so true about women. When we come back to this point, because it's so fundamental to the way we are as women, um, or are wired, I know that's the truth too. We look around at our relationships, a loveless marriage, rejection by an ex-mate, grown children who won't call home and come to visit, approaching 40 and, uh, and not a suitor in sight, uh, and feeling, uh, feelings tell us nobody loves us, not even God. He may, lo uh, he may love the world, he may love everyone else, but he doesn't really love me. If he did, he wouldn't feel, um, I wouldn't feel so lonely and unloved. We'd never say this aloud, but this is what we feel to be true. So the seed of the lie is planted in our minds. We dwell on the lie until we believe it to be true. Sooner or later, our behavior reflects what we really believe, and we end up in bondage. That is so true. Mm. She said, perhaps you can relate to Victoria's background. She said, I came from somewhat of a difficult and distant family in which love was always conditional. As a result, it was very hard for me to believe God would really love me unconditionally. That brought undue condemnation whenever I would make it make a mistake and, and sin not, that sin anything to be overlooked. But I did not believe God would forgive me. Now, that's probably a lot of families, really. That's probably a whole lot of families. Uh, it is, she says, she goes on to say, it is so, it is no small matter to give in to that lie that God doesn't love me. The implications are enormous and affect every other area of, li of our lives and relationships. Tiny little seeds allow to make root in our minds, grow up and produce a great big harvest. Ooh, Lord, that's the truth. We don't realize the smallness of that really makes a difference in terms of how we allow that to penetrate us. She goes on and she says, The truth is God does love us. Whether or not we feel loved, regardless of what we have done, where we've come from, He loves us from an infinite, in incomprehensible love. God loves me, not because I have loved Him since I was four years old, not because I speak to please Him, not because... I speak to, uh, at conferences and write books. He loves me because he is love. He loves uh, for me. is not ba His love for me is not based on anything I've ever done or ever could do for him. It is not based on my performance. It's, I do not deserve his love and could never earn it. I, you know what? That gets all over me because that is so true. We have really got to understand that nothing we can ever do would really um, comp I mean, really uh, add up to what God does in terms of his love for us. I'm talking about really. I think many times, and even in the church, we find people trying to do ministry just so that they're trying to uh, allow God to, to love them more because they have a misunderstanding of who God is. Because like Nancy is saying, he is love. He will do it anyway. The scripture says that when I was his enemy, he loved me. You say, how could you have loved God's enemy? How could you have loved God's enemy when you were a little girl? According to the Bible, from the moment I was born, I was ungodly, a sinner, God's enemy, and deserving of his eternal wrath, Romans 5, 6 through 10. Well, I wish we could get that. In spite of my alienation from him, he loved me and sent his son to die for me. He loved me in eternity past. He will love me for all eternity future. There is nothing I can do to make him love me any less. There is nothing I can do to make him love me anymore. She says, Milena, Milena Monroe is a friend who has faced a long, hard battle with breast cancer. 
in a recent letter she talked about how she had to come to a deeper comprehension of the incredible love of God through her husband's response to her double mastectomy. Now that is a true, true issue for women. And I think if we don't see God's love in those areas, we really are really in bondage. She says, as we wept and trembled when he took my bandages off the first time, I was so ugly, scarred, and bald. I was in intense grief that I could never be a whole woman again, a uh, wife to him again. Steve held me tightly with tears in his eyes and said, Milana, I love you because that is who I am. I instantly recognized Christ in my husband. As his bride, we are also eaten up with cancer, sin, and are scarred, uh, mutilated, and ugly. But he loves us because that is who he is. No comeliness is in us through draws Christ. Uh, in, okay, in us draws Christ's attention. It is only his essence that draws him to us. That is so beautiful. And then she goes on and she says, Hannah Whitall Smith invites us to, to contemplate the vastness, the, the uh, height, the depth of greatness of the, of the Lord's love. She said, put together all the tenderest love you know of, the deepest you have ever felt, and the strongest that you've ever poured out upon you, upon anyone, and heap, it, and heap upon it all the love of the loving human hearts in the world and then multiply it by infinity mm. and you will begin perhaps to have some faint glimpse of what love God is I love that because there's no way to measure it that's what she's saying there's really no way to measure God's love I think the thing to understand here is this there's nothing you can do nothing you can ever be that, that will stop God from loving you because he is love I think that's the thing to get. He is love. And with him being love, he can never stop loving you. He just couldn't do it. Now man might be able to do it, but God can never stop loving me. I understand that from the scripture. I ask you today to grab the truth of, of God and live with it. I'm talking about embrace it with all of your heart. Because it therein lies you're embracing it, the, embracing the truth. That would be the thing to set you free from the lie that you might be believing right now. I want you to do it now. Please come back and be with us again as we talk about the next lie that Nancy addresses. And she says, the lie we believe that God is just like a father. Interesting. Be with me next time. Be blessed. <laughs>